don't have a problem with killing. Stop! You gotta be fucking kidding me! What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, there is a brand new Chucky show. Now, Chucky isn't exactly a top-line kind of scary horror franchise from my youth, but it was certainly up there. More popular than, say, Leprechaun. Less popular than, say, Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween's Michael Myers. So you have, you know, you have Michael Myers. You, of course, have uh, Jason Voorhees. You know, you've got these iconic threats, but Chucky was always kind of up there, especially because I think I watched it when I was too young, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's weird as a fan of, of horror films, it's so easy to make them terrible. I would actually really love like an ongoing running horror series. So I was interested in the new Chucky show, which is a USA network sci-fi spin-off show uh, in terms of kind of like spooky long-running shows right now you know 10 years ago you had you know two or three good seasons of american horror story that show is garbage now and it's somehow still on um, their spin-off show american horror stories is unbelievable garbage i haven't watched a worse maybe television show ever it's certainly the worst horror slash thriller i've ever seen um and so but like most fans of horror we keep coming back i keep seeing the movies and they keep sucking and they keep blowing it in the end we have the occasional new interesting take like midsummer which was awesome until the last 15 minutes of the movie where it fell apart which is so common for horror films i suppose in the modern era, there's It Follows that I thought was pretty good. Um, there's the one where the grandma's not really the grandma and the kids are there to see her. I forget exactly what that one was. That was okay. The like the Annabelle series ones are kind of the next best that we have. Um, the Conjuring series, these are okay. But as a horror fan, our, our standards, our expectations are so low. You know, we, we glom onto things like Stranger Things which actually admittedly was pretty good for the first season or two. Uh, but now we have Chucky's show, Chucky show's story explores the main character's orientation. That's what, that's what we really want, right? I, now I know that the Chucky franchise has kind of been very progressive over the last few years so this isn't exactly like a totally crazy thing um you know you can see uh here here's an article in the washington post i don't remember when they wrote this let's see this is from last year you know from slasher villain to lgbt icon child's plays chucky changes with the times you can see the second and almost compelling phase found child's play adapting to a post scream era of self-awareness awareness and in jokes transforming itself into a lurid camp comedy flush with references to horror classics and a distinctly progressive appeal to the LGBT community. Is it because it's campy? And I'm not sure the connection you're making there. Through, uh, though made six years apart in 98 and 2004, Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky are companion pieces. The first wildly stylized black comedy directed by Hong Kong action specialist Ronnie Yu and the second Mancini's debut behind the camera. By adding Tilly, Jennifer Tilly, by the way, um, as Tiffany, a baby voiced uh, character inspired by her character in the film Bound, the series opened itself to some spicy stuff. And, you know, the idea... Um, that you know there isn't some you know level of i guess wokeness that is in chucky i mean they had like you know a big pride the pride of chucky marathon on sci-fi you know because sci-fi absolutely loves um being progressive but like no this isn't what anybody wants 
out of a, a horror film or series. This this series will be terrible. I guarantee it. Um, not because it explores the main character's um, uh, bedroom leanings and orientations, but because that's not what horror fans want. So if you want some CW level cringe, that's what you're going to get here. USA Network and Sci-Fi's upcoming Child's Play spinoff, Chucky, will explore teen main characters Jake Weber's orientations. The horror film franchise has been going strong since first arrived in 89. Going strong is a bit of a stretch. Back then, the tone bordered on psychological horror, which was when it was great, as Child's Play attempted to create genuine feeling of terror over the possibility of, you know, everything going on. With the creation of the TV series spinoff, Yet another perfect example of taking a like a established franchise and saying like, hey, but what if this was about woke politics stuff and and people who who people sleep with? Isn't that what isn't that what horror fans really want? Like, sure, there is an element of this in modern horror films, but it's just for like the aesthetic. You're not looking at like in depth relationship stuff. You're looking at like two people hooking up so that Jason so you can get some some bobs. Uh, on the screen before Jason Voorhees separates them with a pole, you know. Um, you see, with the creation of the TV spinoff, Don Mancini is attempting to do something entirely different with the franchise. Great, it's going to suck, but good for you. Chucky focuses on a teenager, Jake or Zachary Arthur, who, in addition to being something of a loner, is struggling with his own identity and bullied as a result. Jake discovers a good guy doll at the local yard sale and forms a one-sided friendship with it. But as time progresses, the series of grisly endings begin to occur, shocking Jake's small community. There is clearly no doubt who's behind them, at least for fans, obviously. The new series marks the first time that teen cast is leading the charge to stop the ending. The doll and Chucky looks to offer more than just his standard slasher plot, which is all anyone actually wants. One of the biggest changes that Chucky brings is the focus on Jake's orientation. Having a gay lead character is another first for the franchise. Okay, it doesn't mean it's automatic. It doesn't mean it's better, or doesn't mean it's worse. But it's you know it's such a stupid thing. It's like um, this is the first time a, a a woman has you know Hollywood. What's that meme like? This is the first time a black character has ever done this before. And then there's like a million examples of it happening before. Anyway, um, and how it affects the character's day to day life. During Chucky's recent featurette at years, this year's Comic-Con, Don Mancini spoke about how the series movies, beyond simply being a horror TV program, instead showcases plenty of heart in dealing with Jake's friendship and crush on another teen boy. Read what Mancini stated via Comic-Con International's YouTube channel below. I'm out. Like, I'm out. I'm not tuning in to Chucky to watch a romance between two teen boys. Um, you know, I... I think over the years, I've kind of softened my position on this in that, like, you know, I don't know what else I can say. Like, it's happening so often that there must be a market for it. I don't know. I, I just want a good horror franchise. I don't really care about the main character's love life. It's supposed to be secondary to whatever this doll is doing. It was a perfect example. If you watch American Horror Stories, episode three, um, there's this movie, and the movie makes people go crazy. And um, when people watch it, they end up like, you know, doing terrible things. Instead of that, which alone is enough of a plot point, they cram um, a, a, a trans character in who is also like a a deviant, you know, a hookup obsessed. That's another trope about the gay community that they're fine. Do these progressive shows are fine per perpetrating, but you know, that's, that's not, that's not been my experience, um, with the, you know, the members of the LGBT community that I know, but anyway, so then he's like hooking up with another dude at the movie theater. And then the other dude is hooking up with another girl um, and this is like what two thirds of the plot or a third of the plot is about. And they waste all this time, uh, on, on the relation. It's a one hour episode. So anyway, they rush through all the action, the movie plays. So everything happens off screen. And then suddenly these two teen, this teen couple of a boy and a girl, uh, defeat the bad guy. And then the show ends with them hooking up for the, for him, her popping his cherry, so to speak. Like that's not television. That's like soft core garbage. That's like Red Shoe Diaries 
uh, uh, wrapped in some lame uh, horror film. I'm not saying that cheese isn't like cheesy horror doesn't have uh, a place because honestly, even episode four, that show is pretty funny. It like makes fun of like TikTok hype houses and all this stuff, but there's just no good horror or even suspense these days. I mean, you have to totally pick through every single turd to find a peanut. And it's so tiring for somebody who, you know, grew up with great films like, you know, Poltergeist, Amityville. Um, obviously, I you know, objectively, Halloween is probably my, f I prefer that franchise over just straight slasher films uh, because there's a little bit more suspense building. Uh, than the Friday the 13th. Then maybe Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy Krueger. That's, you know, there's usually a good bit of subtext there. You learn about the character's weaknesses and then how Freddy, you know, uses them against them. There's just like nothing like that. I mean, I guess you could say the Saw franchise, but I never really had much respect for those type of films. I don't like those like just films that focus exclusively on gore. Um, so you have here it might not seem like much of a big step forward for chucky to have a gay lead character who also happens to be a teenager why why is that a big deal are you, are you like these people creeps but the fact of the matter is the movie is indeed a substantial one traditionally slasher films have evolved into very datist dated point of view and honest appraisal of many slasher films today's viewed as classic points of very limited and accurate views of teenagers and adults the portrayal of orientation is typically staunchly macho and hetero with little room for anything else Okay, great. I mean, let's see how it does. I have a feeling it's going to be awful because it's going to it's going to be more concerned with this dude's t this teenager's love interest than horror, um, which is not why anyone tunes in to Chucky. But maybe I'll be wrong. I don't think I will be though. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.